quality control in a civil engineering project and how it is different from quality assurance. A reformed traditional law is in the new, the Bharti Nyaya Sahita 150. Now what is that particular law? What is your idea of patriotism? Since your name is Aditya, can you tell me some of the important steps that government has taken around Aditya? You are from Lucknow. Define Lucknow in three words. May I come in, sir? Yes, come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Please morning, be seated. Sir. Thank you, sir. Please give a brief introduction about yourself. Sir, my name is Aditya Radeo Padhyay. I belong to Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. I completed my schooling from Lucknow Public School in the sector I region of Lucknow. And then I graduated in Bachelor's in Civil Engineering from IIT Roorkee. Since then, I have been preparing for civil services. My hobbies and interests include cricket, following chess streams, and also reciting Bhagavad Gita. You yeah, have passed out from IIT Roorkee, Civil yes. Engineering, with a very high CGPA. Yes. Why did you not go for the campus placement? Sir, uh, since in my third year of graduation, I decided that I had to go into this field of civil services. I explored the various options available and was very interested by the diversity on offer here. Which is why you didn't go for the... Yes. Okay. So suppose as a civil engineer, if you get into the civil services and you are asked to overview a project then of a national importance, then how will you balance uh, uh, environmental and socio-economic concerns while planning and executing a project? First of all, as you said, sir, planning a project is very important. So, what is the scale of the project? What are the materials involved? What is the goal of the project, objective of the project? These things have to be taken into account. And then as is followed in the governmental uh, processes, we have to do an environmental impact assessment. Also, social impact assessment in terms of how many people will be displaced or what will, over the life cycle of the project, what will be the pollution concerns or what will be the wastage concerns. So, these things will have to be taken into account. But the most important thing will be the safety of the structure and how it can uh, stand up to its performance objective. So, those things will have to be balanced. Okay. What do you mean by quality control in a civil engineering project? and how it is different from quality assurance? Sir, I am not exactly aware of the you difference between exactly the two. Aware. What do you mean by risk management in a civil engineering project? Sir, it refers to how we can control our structure from various amount of risk such as seismic risk, failure risk. Failure can also be occur in various modes such as buckling or load failure, foundation failure. So, controlling our structure and Assuring a factor of safety from each of these failures is risk management. Okay. Being a civil engineer, why have you opted for mathematics as your optional subject? Mathematics has always been very dear to me uh, since my early days. And civil engineering also involves a lot of mathematics. And most importantly, as I analyzed that which people become more successful in this examination, so, based on that analysis, I took mathematics. So, expediency was also a factor while yes. uh, uh, choosing mathematics. Yes. Uh, very often we hear about uh, mathematical models in uh, different spheres of working. In the, as far as the government is concerned, suppose if with your background of mathematics and all, you are asked to apply math mathematical model in the energy sector. So, what uh, ideas can come to your mind? particularly in the field of energy management, to be very precise. Sir, currently government is exploring regarding a hybrid model of energy, can, like ethanol is being mixed with diesel and petrol, and also renewable energy and fossil fuel energy. These are balanced, government is trying to balance the aspects of development and the aspects of climate change. So, using a mathematical model, we can analyze what exactly proportion is required in terms of ethanol and diesel, which is bet best suiting the individuals and also the corporates and public are more accepting it in general. So, by running a mathematical model, we can analyze and ar arrive at a right proportion of our mix for a fossil fuel and renewable energy and in terms of ethanol 
and diesel so suppose if you are asked to present a mathematical uh, model so as to optimize your energy production and uh, its distribution how will you go about it sir first of all we will need to analyze what are the customers or who are the people needing the energy so based on that we will see what amount of production is needed what are the materials needed what are the plants needed and then we will see how efficient we can make that production process by running a model secondly in distribution like various grids have to be made so the exact node points the exact wires or exact sources these will need to be analyzed on various things and then see which is the most efficient distribution method thank you thank you sir okay aditya yes sir aditya you are coming from uttar pradesh uttar pradesh has been in news because of some important words like bulldozer politics right also some police encounters now what is your stand on this sir on police encounters they have to be the last resort and in terms of self defense only anything against the domain of law or outside the established procedures is wrong in my view and on the bulldozer issue these have to be done as per the standard operating procedure the particular individual whose house or shop is demolished he needs to be served a proper notice and given a chance to be heard as per the principles of natural okay. justice that is absolutely fine and uh, a principle of natural justice must be followed but my question to you is it is a kind of political gimmick now most of the states have started copying this expression right for populistic justice what is the solution bulldozer is the solution so my question to you is that how how far how uh, you can say correct it it would be when in uh, in the context of realizing this values of governance or rather the politicians must follow ethical probity in terms of uh, conducting those uh, you can say actions so what is your view in that is it is, are we going in the right direction in that context assign listening to the people and going outside the domain of law is never right we have to remain in the domain of law and but on the flip side is that we should not be scared from bold actions but they have to be as per law but bold actions should not be our flagship program and that needs to be adopted everywhere they should be adopted when they are as per the rules only so i would say government can take these actions but they have to be as per the processes and if they go outside we are on a slippery slope okay okay aditya uh, my next question to you is uh, sedition law is also very much in news right now i would say a reform sedition law is in the news uh, the bharatiya nyay sanhita 150 now what is that particular law so government has changed it from raj droh to desh droh so now you raj are excited to desh droh yes okay so now we are you are earlier it anyone who tried to incite uh, disaffection against the government was charged under the sedition law but now it has to be against the nation so earlier law was initiated by the our colonial masters and they did so as to rule the country but now it has been changed in the literal sense so as to imply that we are protecting the country just the law was colonial that is why the law particularly has been changed or some some other reasons are there various law commissions have reported that and the also law commission has recommended even more stricter laws than the sedition law it was being used to muzzle some of the criticism of the government and being used out of the proportion not as per the proportion uh, to which the crime was committed or the action was done so and what action what what was used how how have you substantiated your context where it was sir i cannot recall the exact source at the moment but various sources have reported that some of the journalists were being uh, trampled down using this law and like police authorities were not uh, using it as per the proportion in which it was needed and also it implied that anything criticizing the government is wrong so government wanted to imply that no any your action which excites this instability of nation is wrong not against the government so terming it as a desh droh i think is a right step okay <coughs> so you you believe that freedom of speech and expression must be restrained right that is what your opinion that is what your opinion is yes sir but it should have reasonable restrictions as outlined in our constitution also uh, the report related to 
uh, Oxfam report 2023, uh, that the very re report released something was talking about socialistic aspects of our economy. If you consider that particular report, you would come to know that 1% of the people are controlling 40% of the wealth right now. What kind of trend are we or what kind of trend are we right now into? Could you please tell me that are we going into the right direction of our, as our socialistic aspiration has advocated for? I also came across such report and it implied that a fair share of proportion of wealth is controlled by the corporates. But we need, need to look at this issue from multiple aspects. If we look at the multidimensional poverty index report of Niti Aayog, it the our poverty has decreased from 25% to around 15%. And also if we see our advances in education field, in terms of health field, maternal mortality rate is decreasing. So in terms of human development indicators, we are improving day by day at the micro level. Yes, but because of the inflowing investment, India growing as a market and also growing on as an economy as a whole, the top, the cream at the top is bound to grow. So this report reflects that the cream, the, pers the big corporates are growing, but if we look at other human development indicators also, we are growing at the micro level. So I don't think it is a major issue, but yes, we need to bridge the inequality and so that most of our population is in balance and everyone gets a good quality. Of Have life. you read the Hiddenberg report? Have you seen what, what was the report all about? How it actually Im, uh, brought an impact up in on our foreign, this particular economy? Have you seen that? Yes, sir, I am aware about that. It criticized the policies and actions of specific no, I am also very curi curious that some of the reports published by some of the international firm or maybe some international media house, uh, actually can affect our economy. Now, what has the government done so far to, you can say, control the negative uh, sentiments spread across the boundary or across the territory? So, what, 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 what went wrong? Because for a few period of time, something actually was not working right for our stock market. So, could you please highlight some of the issues related to that? Uh, sir, as you said, Hindenburg report criticized specifically the Adani group for some of its policies related to short selling and hence we, I cannot recall exact but initial public offer or rights on offer especially was not taken up by the public and its stocks started going down and also with respect Then of course various reports came out that refuted that particular claim. So my question is what has the government done so far because some of the reports come and go it actually is affecting directly the economy. What, where, where are we functioning, or where, where, which part we are actually lacking? My question to you is that: Where are, are we? Are we doing everything in the right direction? With regard to our corporate policy, I think we can bring an element of trust between government and especially few foreign companies also, so that various disputes related to Vodafone can be settled in that sense. And in terms of these criticisms, I think right messaging, following of standard protocols and also transparency can bring good things. Okay, Aditya. Thank you. Thank Aditya, you, yes, what sir. is your idea of patriotism? My, my idea of patriotism is being allowing myself to develop to the full potential to serve the country in my way and also following the laws, articles of the constitution and fundamental duties. Who do you think serves the country the best? Which kind of job, you know, serves country the best? I don't have any job which can serve the country in the best way possible. Every individual has a specific role to play and if they play their role to the full potential and try to improve, they are serving country in the best way. Have you heard about this silent uh, power energy crisis that's happening in Uttar Pradesh and a lot of people are dying also due to the uh, heat wave. Have you heard about it? Uh, Ma'am, I am aware of the heat wave issue but silent power crisis specific term I have not much idea about. Okay, uh, Aditya, UP has become the second largest contributor to India's economy. Yes, ma'am. If you had to point out to three factors that are responsible for it, what would you say? Ma'am, first of all, the government with respect to its protocols and policies has made doing business easy. We rank second in ease of doing business by Niti Aayog. Also, government is inviting investment proposal from diverse a group of corporates last year a global investor summit was organized and in which around 25,000 deals were in so we are making good relations with the corporates also in terms of skill India missions of government of India and UP we have also made good progress 
and lastly education policy has also increased in five to six years with cheating in exams reducing more focus on increasing the quality of education with respect to Diksha app. So at micro level, we are also doing good, which is increasing our uh, output in the employment sector. Okay. Uh, Aditi, can you tell me what is Vedic Maths? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, Vedic Maths was a series of sutras written by Bharatiya Krishna Tirth and it outlines how to solve basic mathematical calculations in an easier way. Has it been taken from Vedas? Ma'am, in my knowledge, it is not related to Vedas. Okay, you also have interest in uh, uh, reading uh, Bhagavad Gita. Yes, ma'am. Can you uh, recite a verse here which is your favorite? Uh, ma'am, my favorite is. So, uh, here God is speaking, Shri Krishna. Asanshaya hi mahabaho, manurdur nigraham chalan, abhyasena tu konteya, vairagyena tu grihiyate. What does it mean? So, in the previous verse, Arjun asked Lord Krishna that the mind is so difficult to control, it's as fast as wind, how to control it? So Krishna is saying to Arjuna, yes, you are right. It is very difficult to control, even best people fail to do it. But Abhyasen, by repeated practice and Vairagyen, by renunciation, you can control the mind. How is uh, Bhagavad Gita different from Srimad Bhagavad Gita? Is there any difference? Ma'am, I think full name people write as Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita. Are you sure there's no difference? Yes, ma'am. In my view, there is no difference. When we say Shri Mad, then we are adding an element of respect here in my knowledge. Okay, my last question to you would be, let's say you had to change one thing about Uttar Pradesh. What would that be? Ma'am, what I have witnessed in public life and in my experience in general, I want to change the health condition of Uttar Pradesh, especially if I move to top hospitals in my area, especially SGPGI, people are lined up, they are coming from far away of the region, sleeping on the ground, so waiting for long So government is not lines. doing enough in the health sector, is that what you are suggesting? Government is propagating its policies, but due to the issues of demography, population difficulties and growing sur surrounding change like climate change and non-communicable diseases, we are not able to progress. We rank last in health security index of Niti Ayo. And our average spending is also around 450 per capita on health. So it is very bad. Aditya, uh, since your name is Aditya, can you tell me some of the important steps that government has taken around Aditya? Uh, Ma'am, there was a mission by Indian Space Research Organization, Aditya L1. So it involves the study of uh, photosphere and corona part of sun and it is positioned at the L1 Raglan point. And anything with respect to sun in general that government is seeking to gain from? Uh, Ma'am, solar parks. Right, uh, okay. So, what is the aim of government with respect to National Solar Mission? Ma'am, I cannot recall the exact objective in terms of quantification of energy, but it is establishing solar parks and rooftop programs organized, Surya Mitra a capacity building initiative is organized and our renewable energy policy rests on the shoulders of solar energy only because it is the most viable as far as current situation is concerned. What is the idea behind solar parks? Ma'am, so idea behind the solar parks is to create a, as a complete atmosphere for the development of solar energy with regards to industries and also related industries there so that we can create better supply chains and uh, develop solar energy in a better way. Okay, so India's stated uh, goal was 100 gigawatts of solar energy by 2022 which we have not been able to attain even in 2023. Yes. What went amiss? What was... Uh, not hitting the target. I think we are progressing in the right manner, but as far as issues are concerned, land acquisition policies are still not easy. People protest whenever land is acquired. Recently, there was a protest in Tamil Nadu. Secondly, in terms of manufacturing of solar cells, we need to import a lot, large amount of cells from China. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, we need we lack a holistic approach to the policy. Like in Ladakh, large amount of land is available, sun is available, but evacuation infrastructure is not there. So, taking care of all the aspects, resolving land issues and building more Atman Nirbharata in the sector will be helpful. When we talk about solar energy, it's largely considered as environment friendly. Is it really? Uh, ma'am, as far as in my knowledge, some amount of pollution is always there in terms of life cycle, setting up infrastructure there and involved machines. So, some amount of pollution is always done, but we always see the relative advantage. And in terms of relative advantage, we are better. Talking, continuing the talk about the energy, there has been the tripling of nuclear energy pledge in the last COP, COP28. 
why do you think the world is shifting back towards nuclear energy and do you think it's going to be successful that pursuing this nuclear energy as energy solution ma'am nuclear energy is not renewable energy but if we see harm to the environment is it is very less as compared to the conventional forms of energy such as fossil fuels mm -hmm. and also recently in america scientists discovered that fusion reaction was possible mm -hmm. so if we see the scope of fusion is very big in this fusion generates almost 100 times the energy as mm -hmm. compared to fission so if we are able to scale fusion at a big level i think this pledge is attainable but then why only 22 countries have signed on the pledge why not more nations are upbeat for this if that is the solution for the future issues of energy ma'am i am not aware of the exact reason but if you allow me i'll try to attempt uh, ma'am because nuclear raw material is not easily available to all the countries and like general consensus among the developing countries and third world countries is that nuclear energy has been reduced to monopoly of the permanent five and these countries especially india also lags behind in access to quality uranium so this might be the reason second this also may like use of nuclear energy may again involve it weaponization in some way these might be the fears okay uh, recently in india we had seen the uh, tunnel collapse in uttarakhand yes ma'am uh what were the civil engineering lapses when this happened uh, like you were talking about the risk uh, assessment also with sir yes so what exactly happened and do you think that entire chardham project when you look at it from civil engineering perspective as well as from the environmental concerns in a vulnerable zone do you think it's viable as a project uh ma'am as far as silkara tunnel is concerned in terms of civil engineering uh, our honorable minister nitin gadkari said that all the protocols were followed and i will take his word but the scientists said that when the repeated excavations were done the previous layer of rock fragments they disintegrated so the collapse happened secondly there was a proposal initially in the environmental impact assessment report that a service road could be constructed or an emergency tunnel mm. and so but the constructors went ahead with widening the entire road and not constructing that tunnel for better management of traffic which is right but i think safety could have been factored in but it looks in hindsight i think we can say anything but more caution would have helped secondly in terms of chardham project constructions in environmentally sensitive regions of himalayas is always difficult and as as civil engineers we take it up as a challenge so first of all i think environmental impact assessment needs to be looked on and if it if it says that it is viable it needs to be followed but i think with the rapidly changing climate change and also altering topographies we need to repeatedly reconnaissance what is the status of ground there what is the status of general climate there and then proceed ahead with constructions because if assessment is done in 2015 the situation might not be same in 2024 okay uh when you look at the world right now we are seeing two major wars going on not seeing an end in this scenario do you think that unsc and unga still hold relevance if yes why have there been no uh, consensus on ceasefire and two if not then why is india still pursuing that dream of having a seat in un sc ma'am i will say that they still hold relevance but in relative terms effective action has been lacking but if we see the stance of various countries lots of negotiations are done on a single resolution what is the exact wording of resolution so this reflects the importance of united nations and what statement it makes at the global level so i think it is still relevant in the current context but in terms of effective action the the composition of security council needs to change the ruling regard related to veto hmm. needs to change and we need to see how we can take decisions with a better consensus and better interest for the world because veto resolution allows a participant to the war like russia to get away easily so if we can alter the processes and composition of unsc and, and the decision making at ung i think we can change the current relevance of united nations and make it for better okay uh, you said that maths was your favorite uh, yes ma'am when is uh, maths day celebrated for india and when is the international maths day celebrated ma'am india it is 22nd december the birth anniversary of shrinivas and ramanujan and international mathematics day i cannot recall at the present moment okay just look for it thank you thank you ma'am aditya uh, in three word you are from lucknow define lucknow in three words any of the three words of your choice by which you can describe lucknow 
द सिटी ऑफ अदब क्विजींस एंड डाइवर्सिटी फाइन लखनऊ इज पार्ट ऑफ अवध राइट एंड इन अयोध्या देयर इज अ बिग राम टेम्पल विच इज गोइंग टू बी इनोग्रेटेड वट इज द रेलिवेंस ऑफ दिस राम टेम्पल स्पेशली ऑन इकोनॉमी ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश मैम आई एम सॉरी सर सर एज इफ वी लुक एट द स्टेटस ऑफ श्री राम ही इज वन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल गॉड्स इन हिंदुइज्म एंड इट इज अयोध्या इज इज बर्थ प्लेस सो अ बिग टेम्पल स्पेशली एट अयोध्या विच हैज बीन अमंग द न्यूज फॉर लास्ट सो सो मेनी ईयर्स आई थिंक इट इज अ बिग टूरिस्टिक अट्रैक्शन एंड पीपल फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द कंट्री विल कम अप सो एंड एंड एयरपोर्ट इज ऑल्सो बींग कंस्ट्रक्टेड देयर सो अ लॉट ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट इज ऑलरेडी बींग जनरेटेड and if people start coming then a lot of ancillary industries related to tourism will be set up there and if we look at ayodhya and lucknow from purvanchal express way it takes hardly 1.5 hours so the development as at ayodhya will trickle down to lucknow in various ways and more and more industries will invest here uh, with lots of tourism tourists coming up fine fashion. fine fine aditya uh, you have studied mathematics also right yes there is a change in calculation of uh, human development index in earlier methodology we were calculating the average through arithmetic mean now we are calculating it through geometric mean why this change happened and what are the advantages sir i am not aware of specific reasons behind the change but in various calculations we prefer arith geometric mean to arithmetic mean because arithmetic mean sees the processes from both the sides as equal but in reality whenever we to consider two quantities they are in different phases or different conditions and circumstances so often geometric mean gives us the better value like to towards which thing ideal way is tilted because in arithmetic mean we will get the exact middle value 12 and 20 we will get to middle value around 15 16 but in geometric mean towards which higher the actual value is tilted we get that and harmonic mean is also better in calculations like fine 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 what is fibonacci series and what is its role in uh, our common day to day life sir fibonacci series is a special series in which sum of previous two numbers is equal to the third number and if we see uh, like life around us in terms of petals mm. snails so they follow the fibonacci series the number of curves in previous two uh, rotations is equal to the curves in next rotation right as your hobby is watching cricket match right yes there has been reports of a recent change in uh, viewership of cricket matches now india pakistan cricket match is not one of the favorites right what are the other uh, i mean trends shifting trends of the viewership pattern of these cricket matches if we see They, they are now there are two modes of viewership mm. the app based viewership and television based viewership and if we see the two major players jio and disney star they have made watching cricket free especially for big tournaments like ipl and world cup so people are working day and night in terms of uh, different shifts so app based viewership is rising among general indian population secondly But why india pakistan cricket match is losing its sheen now people are shifting to some other if matches if we see past 10 to 15 years performance of indian team we have repeatedly beaten pakistan in most of the events this regarding one or two but if we see overall performance we have not won any trophy for since 10 years so that's why fine people are interested in what we are doing in more significant matches not in a group match or a league match that's why this right matter. fine my last question to you is that you are a, a student of civil engineering also what is green cement and what what is its relevance in context to environment when we associate green with any word we point out to the environment friendly aspect of that thing so a cement in which uh, from production levels we make as less much as carbon intensive materials and also the amount of water involved is also less so that it is water efficient that is a green cement and with as in india which is still a developing country and cannot shift immediately to more advanced materials green cement is a good concept so as to make our buildings green buildings and environment friendly in general thank you adit thank you sir adit uh, let's come back to geeta sure you say that you recite bhagavad geeta i also little bit, know little bit of uh, bhagavad geeta what i propose to do 
I'll uh, Gita shlokas. I'll recite a few shlokas. I'll speak first sentence. You have to complete the second sentence. I'll okay. try my best. Okay. Vasansi jirnai yatha vihai navani ghanati taro parani. Sir, I cannot recall the exact. You can't name. recall. Karma ne vadika raste ma phaleshu kadachana. Ma karma phale hetur bhur ma sangvastu a karmani. Good. Nainang chindanti sastani nainang dahati pavaka. Na cha nainam kledayan tapu na soshyati maru. Wonderful. Last. Paritranai sadhunang vinarshai cha duskritang. Dharma sansthapana thari sambhavami yuge yuge. Wonderful. Nice interacting with you. The interview is over. You may go now. Thank you, sir. Sit down, Harit. Thank you, sir. This is uh, your uh, first attempt or what? Sir, this is my second attempt. This is your second first interview. First right? interview. Yes. Wonderful. How have you done in your remains? I think I have done better, but I cannot be sure of my yeah, exact. Of course. Of course. So the mathematics part uh, is okay. Yes, sir. I think I have done. Okay. Okay. How was your experience today with us? It was a learning experience. I need to improve on certain things, but yes, I got to learn. You see, your interview is on third, for second one, the very first day of interview. Yes. Don't stop brooding over uncertainties. You are a wonderful candidate, I must tell you. Exceptional candidate. And uh, that day, if nothing drastically ro- goes wrong with you, you are going to get a very good marks. Yes, okay. First thing, when you entered, okay, you took permission and all that. Button this etiquette of the suit says, that when when you come, uh, when you sit down, then Sorry, you open sir. this uh, buttons. And then when you go back again, you should. So that 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 is the only flaw in, in the entire thing. That when you entered, your buttons were on. You sat down also, your buttons were on. So just try to be relaxed. That is the whole purpose, sure, isn't sir. it? You are a man of uh, varied interest, uh, IITN with mathematics and Gita. These are very, uh, very strange combination, but it's true. In your case, you have come out with flying colors. Absolutely, uh, whatever questions we ask, we are quite impressed. Only thing is, be your natural self. Your communication skill is very good. You could communicate your ideas freely, frankly, and with aplomb. So, maintain your neutrality, maintain, maintain your natural self. And in, in, on any contentious issue, Try to give a very balanced answer. Don't take any extreme step against government, pro-government, but don't take any extreme. And uh, you are a person who can, who is capable of thinking. So wherever any such question comes, try to demonstrate that part of your personality also by giving some out-of-box solution, some some uh, uh, wonderful ideas. Then. What kind of questions will be asked? Very difficult for us to tell you also. Sure. What kind of questions will be asked? You are a boy from Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh is in news the last few years, particularly on the uh, on the one hand, development of Uttar Pradesh, how foreign investment is, uh, government is trying to do the foreign investment. What are the implications of that? Ram Mandir is already there. Corridors have been uh, constructed all around. Then your uh, Ganga Vilas cruise project is there. Uh, so, what kind of questions? Uh, very difficult for uh, me to tell you. But prepare Uttar Pradesh thoroughly. And uh, particularly with respect to three, four areas, your infrastructure area, your education in Uttar Pradesh, agriculture, rural development, and the schemes launched by the state government and the central government. Uh, in the larger context of uh, your, uh, your uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, um, that uh, Amrit Kal period. So, uh, keeping that in view, you uh, prepare all that. Otherwise, have confidence in yourself. You have clarity of thought. You stayed honest throughout, which is very important. Your personal integrity and honesty of purpose is seen while discussing with you because the prospective servant is a civil servant has to be honest from all angles so that is that was reflected in your uh, uh, interaction with you that was good honesty is very good clarity is there in you and stand by what you say 
don't try to waver if you have taken a stand and you think it is a logical stand stand by that don't don't buckle under pressure otherwise uh, you are going in this dress only i will change the shirt inside it will be a white shirt otherwise i think this will be other if you are wearing a white shirt it's good the tie goes uh, well with that if you have any specific question in mind feel free to ask otherwise just have uh, confidence and believe in i've got a feedback from uh, some other panels and my parents and relatives that i seem a bit tensed in the interview sometimes so to what degree you felt that sir i am trying to it improve was, it it was there but then the, the way you are speaking the way you are uh, uh, engaging us so that aspect was not very prominent it's always good to be looking very uh, to uh, come to the board with a smiling face is always good with a positive body language but your body language was quite positive and uh, look was also uh, it was not palpable this nervousness sign of nervousness was not palpable internally one has to be nervous but it should not reflect outward that is what the purpose is but it's okay okay don't don't worry much about that try to face the board with a smiling face sure. so just uh, it doesn't uh, take much effort in developing that uh, habit otherwise good all good anything else you want to ask no. all of us thank you sir